HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from the annual Poly Arts Festival and Hopkinton Day event. Hiller's Girls Volleyball recently captured a big win and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Ethan Ritter Bush and a team of scouts worked hard this past summer to beautify the trails in Hopkinton. Ethan is doing this as part of his Eagle Scout project. Hi, I'm Ethan Ritterbush, and uh, as part of my Eagle project, I am constructing uh, two nice new walking trails on the Hughes property. Uh, the two trails, uh, one we just continued back there, uh, was a 0.1 mile uh, side loop that is being called the Lollipop Loop. And then the one we're working on now that you can see behind me and uh, behind the cameraman is, uh, uh, doesn't have a name, but it is a, a 0.23 mile uh, trail. Uh, this one uh, goes a bit closer to some neighbor's houses, so we're making sure to take their concerns in hand and try to make sure we stay small and, uh, and make sure we're listening to them about where they want the trail to go and how wide they want it to be. So that's, uh, that's what we're working on now. I got some uh, volunteers from my local Boy Scout troop that are helping out. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, we, we have a work day tomorrow, today, and we're working again tomorrow. And uh, in the upcoming weekends, we're gonna have many more work days that uh, I think the Trails uh, Club will be, uh, will be discussing uh, on their Facebook page. Uh, so yeah, once, once we get these trails cleared, we're planning on putting some, uh, some stream crossings, some kind of small bridges up on parts of the trail to cross over water. Uh, to make sure that but they're going to they're gonna be nice and open uh, so that water can flow through so that we don't disturb any of the natural wildlife or waterways. So if you take a walk on the trails in Hopkinton this fall, you can thank Ethan Ritterbush and his team of scouts for helping to beautify the trails in Hopkinton. Hi, I'm Laurel Kulba co-director of the sanctuary at Woodville in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. As you can see, I'm standing here at beautiful Lake Whitehall, and we have our major fundraiser coming up, Walk Whitehall. Lake Whitehall is right around the corner from the sanctuary, and we wanted to take advantage of the beauty here in nature and encourage people to come and walk. You could walk seven miles. There are seven miles of trails. However, we're encouraging people to walk up to three miles if they'd like. Let's come check out the trail. This fundraiser is to support the ministry efforts of the sanctuary. We are a Christian retreat and spiritual formation center, and we encourage uh, people, groups from all different church backgrounds to come and meet at our place, to have conferences, workshops, seminars, as well as to come and take personal time to, be, to meet with God and grow deeper in your relationship with God. You can book our facility for any of these events. 
We also do individual and group spiritual direction. And so the monies raised will help to support that as well as our facility. You don't have to walk, you can just donate as well. We greatly appreciate that. So if you want to register to be a walker or if you want to donate or both, please go to sanctuaryatwoodville.org. The third annual Hopkinton Family Fun Day took place at the high school fields. Here's a look at this year's event. The third annual Friends of Hopkinton Hopkinton Family Fun Day event took place at the Hopkinton High School fields. Despite the shortened event due to Triple E, a good attendance was on hand to enjoy the festivities. There were many games for the kids, some good music, and plenty of fun for the whole family. Yeah, so you peel it off, and then the dots there, and then put it on, and then peel off the plastic, like a piece of plastic. Yeah, let's see, rub it. pretty well. Uh, there's a decent crowd here now. I'll be honest, it's not as crowded as it was last year and that's because of the, probably because of the rain we had earlier. But, um, you know, it could have been a lot worse. The rain could have continued and it would have probably really hurt our attendance. But, uh, no, it's um, got a good crowd. We're going to be ending it in about a half an hour or so, but people are still out enjoying the uh, activities and the uh, food trucks. So, yeah, we can't complain. Should we talk about uh, some of the sponsors who helped put this event on today? A lot of sponsors. I was just reading the list up there. Um, you know, McIntyre Loom and uh, West End Nurseries, Joe Regan. There was a ton of them. Um, you know, I, I wish I could mention them all, but thanks for the opportunity to, to acknowledge them because really without their um, contributions and involvement, we really wouldn't be able to pull all this off. And it does take a village, as the saying goes, um, so we thank them for their help very much.
Coming up next, we have scenes from the annual Poly Arts Festival. And Hiller Girls Volleyball captured a huge win. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hiller Girls Volleyball has took on Barnstable on an annual basis since 2012 and has never beat them in the regular season. This year, they look to change that and capture their first ever regular season win against the Red Raiders of Barnstable. Continuing on in the service run. Some back line she goes. Allen with the poke there. Grabmeyer with the setup. Push over. Out of play. Hillers get the point. Ashley McDermott had the final push over for the Hillers. And Hopkinton is pumped up as a timeout is called. It's Hillers 13, Barnstable 11. What a game we have so far here. The Hillers trying to capture the set. Hates a starry to the line. Sends it to the back line. Tapped in front, Hillers keep it alive. Nicely done there by Lorette. Bump by Sensini, Lorette. Back to Sensini, pushes it over. Bump by Boyce. Now, Sensini getting in there for the match point. And the Hillers take set number one. Got to feel good if you're Hopkinton coming out, winning the first set by eight points against a really good Barnstable team. We'll send Shay Johnson to the service line. And of course, keep in mind, you have to win the set by two or more. Set up by Lorette, grab Meyer, a little tap over. Barnstable takes set number two. 25 to 22, we are knotted up at one apiece. Checking the rules to see if Turco has to sit since he got a yellow card or if he can stand. Coach Turco argued he could stand and he ended up being right. Takes Astari on the serve. To the back line she goes as we continue on. 13 to 11 Hillers in set number three. There's a bump by Sestari, despite some contact with Millie. Barnstable trying to respond. Grabmeyer keeps it alive. Let's poke back by Lorette. Grabmeyer with a hit over, and it's a Hiller's point. Grabmeyer placed that ball perfectly in the middle of the court. No chance for Barnstable. Hopkinton should be able to close this out. And they will, an ace for Rachel Lorette to close out set number three. 25 to 17 is the final in set number three. Same result as set number one. We'll switch sides once again for set number four. The Hillers just one set away from taking the victory over a division one powerhouse, the Barnstable Red Raiders. 
Stillers by six. Good serve, Good serve. ace. <laughs> wow. Like I was saying, really hitting their stride now. Angie with a great serve right in between the front and the back row. To the back line. Sent over, Angie keeps it going. Still going, punch over. And amazingly, they're able to keep it alive. Can they get to this one? Yes, oh, they can! Oh, Lord. Michaela Pellucci and McDermott, unbelievable. The setup by Angie. The send over by Millie. To the back line. Boyce keeps it alive. Angie sets it up. Pellucci with the smash. Poor Yellers! Wow, the place is going wild after that toy. Unbelievable match point for the Hillers. Shea Johnson is serve. Allen, set up. Grab Meyer and the win! Wow, what a hit to finish it off. Marshall yep. just did not have an answer for Angie's power. They certainly didn't. And that is another 25 to 17 win in the set for the Hillers. All three sets the Hillers won were 25 to 17. The Hopkinton Hillers take down a very good Barnstable team in exciting fashion, three sets to one. Angie Grabmeyer had 12 kills, two aces, a block, 13 digs and 20 assists. Millie had 12 kills and six digs. Marabella Pellucci with nine kills, two blocks and five digs. And Morgan Allen, 24 digs, three assists. Rachel Lorette, 16 assists, three digs and an ace. The Hillers are 4-0 on the season. The 45th annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common this past weekend. Here's a look at the festivities. The 45th annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. A great turnout was on hand to take a look at the dozens of vendors Enjoy the musicians and some delicious treats. I'm Irene Hastings and this is the artwork of my husband and I. Uh, we do digital illustration which we hand draw and then bring into the computer to create prints. There is an online store, uh, it's www.hastings-studio.com and you can buy things there um, in multiple sizes, so uh, usually small through large. And I see a lot of animal pictures here. Are animals the, your favorite type of artwork to do? Yeah, so it's a lot of it's a lot of nature-based stuff. So animals definitely capture my attention. <laughs> we have very beautiful hand-blown glass bowls. They have between three and five different layers of glass. They're blown in Essex Mass. And a key part of our business is we give 10% of every sale to a charity that serves kindness. So today we brought four different charities with us. Buddy Dog Humane Society in uh, Sudbury. We have Lucy's Love Bus that does things for kids with life-threatening illness. We have the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and the Food Project. So come on by, uh, find your favorite color bowl, because we have lots of great colors, and pick your favorite charity and 10% will be donated to them. So you can find us on uh, www.servekindness.com. We have a website where we have the bowls, the information about the charities that we work with, and we ship anywhere in the continental United States. Yeah. Terrific. And we love being out here in Hockington. Excellent. The weather is great with us. Yes. Yeah. Been a good day. Hopefully the rain holds off. Yeah. It will. Exactly. It will. Um, Poly Arts has been my favorite day in Hopkinton since we've been here, and I think I've only missed two Poly Arts in over 19 years. And um, I ha also have a love of art, so I love coming here and decided to volunteer. So I've been volunteering on Poly Arts for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And um, we have Poly Arts, first of all, is a nonprofit, and we um, award at least two $1,000 scholarships to Hopkinton High School graduates who are going on to either major or minor in the arts. And they use the word arts loosely. It could also mean dance, um, theater, photography, creative writing. 
Um, so that's our main focus, and we raise funds by hosting our poly arts events here on the Common. Each vendor um, submits a fee with their application, and that's where our funds come from. This year we have over 70 artisan vendors um, who are on the Brick X on the Common, but then we also encourage community involvement with our nonprofit uh, groups. So here, this area here, is um, showcases a lot of our nonprofits who have activities for children. So uh, you can see here we've got Pumpkin Tic Tac Toe. We've got Hiller's Boosters uh, selling gear here. We even have the uh, Hopkins High Class of 2023 here. We've got Paint and Party doing crafts, henna tattoos, um, alpacas. The girls' volleyball team is over here. They do face painting, nails, and other tattoos. Um, so it's just, and we've got the library's Apple Crisp is always a huge hit. Historical societies here, Boy Scouts uh, supplies food for sale. Um, and we've got some church groups, educational groups here in town, and live music. So it's a day that's just such a wonderful day to, for our community to come together and share the love of the arts and spend time with each other. I always see my friends here. Thank Wonderful. you. How's the turnout been so far? Great. It's always hard for me to say how many visitors we have because um, some people like me can wander around all day long so uh, I can't count myself twice but then we have people that just come and go but um, we, we it's it's just we have great great participation thank you I need someone to love me the whole day. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, September 23rd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., Dr. Cavanaugh chats with Hopkins Principal Vanessa Bellello about the record enrollment numbers across Hopkinton schools on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill, airing on HCAM Ed. So the majority of their academic day is small group work. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little different than what many of us think about as traditional education where all the 24 rows, you know, 24 students are sitting in rows with a teacher in front delivering instruction. Uh, the, the diversity of needs in a classroom would not make that possible in today's world. On Tuesday, September 24th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. On Wednesday, September 25th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Area Land Trust's annual meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Field Hockey vs. Hopedale game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. Well, that's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon.
here with Hopkinton Public Health Director, Sean McAuliffe. Sean, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. And I understand you've been a busy man lately, uh, especially with this triple E threat. Uh, can you talk about the status of the triple E threat here in Hopkinton? Certainly. So in the town of Hopkinton, we're still at um, a critical risk designation. Um, a, because we have one positive mosquito pool that's um, known to have triple E in it. Um, that pool is up um, in the Saddle Hill area. And the other reason we're in that critical designation is because we've had animal cases and um, one human case um, in our region. Um, and for those reasons, bet between the human case, the positive pool, and then the, um, the weather conditions, the frequent heavy rains, um, that's all contributed to make um, the potential for mosquito exposure um, a, a critical risk. And, and I understand you collected a lot of data. Can you tell us about some of that data that you've collected? So we were part of the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. Um, so there they collect weekly samples and the State Health Department now that we're in a critical risk situation. They also collect um, mosquito samples. We have 12 sampling locations throughout the town. Um, and I'm able to go in and look at the Central Mass's data on a weekly basis in the states about every two weeks. And what we're seeing is that the mosquito that um, the mosquito population in town that's positive for Tripoli e, um, is at it's about 290 percent more of those mosquitoes than were present um, in 2018 and 2017. So we know that we have a high mosquito population with Tripoli. E, and when we um, when I was looking at the data the week prior to the aerial spraying. Um, out of the 192,000 mosquitoes that were trapped and um, submitted for um, to the state lab, 162,000 of those were this. See the entirety of this important interview with Health Director Sean McAuliffe at our website, hcam.tv.